The other day I found this very nice readable paper from the year 1913 written by Ramanujan. It was in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society and it's called Irregular Numbers. And it contains some really nice results that I had never seen before. And so I'd like to share them. So we're going to start with the following fact, which is the expansion of a geometric series. And I really can't stress enough how useful it is to recognize expansions of geometric series. Okay, so for all x between negative 1 and 1, we have 1 over 1 minus x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on and so forth. We could write that in summation notation as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. So this is going to be like a very important tool here. Okay, so now let's look at the following object. So we'll take the product over all prime numbers, so I'll call them primes p, of 1 over 1 minus 1 over p to the n. But now let's write out the first couple of terms to get an idea for what's going on here. We have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3 to the n times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5 to the n dot dot dot. So that's an infinite product given that there are infinitely many primes. But now notice that all of these numbers here, 1 over 2 to the n, 1 over 3 to the n, 1 over 5 to the n, if n is bigger than or equal to 2, will in fact be between negative 1 and 1. And I point out that n needs to be bigger than or equal to 2, not bigger than or equal to 1, because this does not converge if n is bigger than or equal to 1. I'll let you guys check that. So now let's expand each of these using a geometric series. So we can rewrite this first one as 1 plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the 2 n plus dot dot dot. This second one will be 1 plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the 2 n dot dot dot. And then this third one, 1 plus 1 over 5 to the n dot dot dot, and then that's an infinite product of infinite sums. Okay, so now let's start multiplying some things out and see what we get. So if we choose 1 from all of these parts, we'll just get the number 1. So definitely 1 is part of this. Now let's say we choose 1 over 2 to the n from this first sum, and then 1 from all of the rest of them. That'll give us 1 over 2 to the n. Then likewise, what if we choose 1 over 3 to the n from this sum and then 1 from all of the rest of them? That'll give us 1 over 3 to the n. Next, let's choose 1 over 2 to the 2n from this first sum and 1 from all of the rest of them. That'll give us 1 over 2 to the 2n or 1 over 4 to the n. I think you can see where we're going here. We'll choose 1 over 5 to the n from here, and then 1 from the rest. Then next, we'll choose 1 over 2 to the n here, 1 over 3 to the n here. That'll give us 1 over 6 to the n plus dot, dot, dot. And I want to point out that each of these numbers will occur exactly one time. And by each of these numbers, I mean every natural number. And that indeed follows from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, but now we can rewrite this and notice that this is the same thing as the sum as m goes from 1 up to infinity of 1 over m to the n, which is in fact equal to the zeta function evaluated at n. So what did we do here? We just got this nice product version of the zeta function. So now let's explore a couple of those values. So a quick application of what we had on the last board is exhibited by the following two examples, which are well-known values of the Riemann zeta function. So we have the product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus 1 over p squared is equal to the zeta function evaluated at 2. That's pi squared over 6. Then the product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus 1 over p to the fourth, that's the zeta function evaluated at 4, that's pi to the fourth over 90. So we're not going to derive those values of the zeta function. Like I said, you can find derivations if you want. They're fairly well known. Okay, so this isn't really new or maybe that interesting, as we've probably all seen this before. But if we invert these formulas, we actually get something nice, which can be molded into maybe some surprising identities. Okay, so let's invert these formulas and see what we get. 
So we'll get the following products after inverting. So 1 minus 1 over 2 squared times 1 minus 1 over 3 squared times 1 minus 1 over 5 squared. That infinite product, as we run through all of the primes, will give us 6 over pi squared. Similarly, if we take the power to be fourth, we'll get the reciprocal of the zeta function evaluated at four, so that'll be 90 over pi to the fourth. So we haven't done anything mind-blowing here, but we have set up something which can produce a fairly nice result pretty quickly. So let's take these two things that we have, these two product identities, and divide them and see what we get. So I think you could probably divide these in any order and get something interesting, but we'll take this second line and divide it by this first line. So let's write this out a little bit. We have one minus one over two to the fourth, one minus one over three to the fourth, one minus one over five to the fourth, dot, dot, dot. That product is happening over all primes over one minus one over two squared, one minus one over three squared, one minus one over five squared, dot, dot, dot. So let's see. That numerator gives us 90 over pi to the fourth, and that denominator gives us six over pi squared. Notice that simplifies down to 15 over pi squared. But it's maybe a little bit more interesting to see what happens if we simplify what's going on on the left-hand side. So let's notice that we can take this first one and factor it as a difference of squares. It factors as 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, 1 plus 1 over 2 squared. And then similarly, this second one will factor as a difference of squares, 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, 1 plus 1 over 3 squared. The next one will also factor, and in fact, all of them will factor. But that sets up some sort of simplification. 1 minus 1 over 2 squared will cancel this 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. 1 minus 1 over 3 squared will cancel this one. This one will get canceled by something that's happening next. And then as you can see, we're left with things on the left-hand side with only sums. So we've got 1 plus 1 over 2 squared times 1 plus 1 over 3 squared times 1 plus 1 over 5 squared expanded out. Okay, so let's bring that result to the top and see if we can go any further. After dividing and simplifying what we had on the last board, we end up with the following identity. So the product over all primes p of 1 plus 1 over p squared is equal to 15 over pi squared. So this in itself is pretty interesting. But I'd like to take this left-hand side, then after taking this left-hand side, I'll expand it out and see if I can write it as an infinite sum, and if that infinite sum has some nice structure. And as we'll see, it definitely will. So let's take this. I'll expand out the first couple of terms. So we have 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, 1 plus 1 over 3 squared, 1 plus 1 over 5 squared, 1 plus 1 over 7 squared, dot, dot, dot. So again, we're taking a product over all of the primes. So let's see. If we take 1 from each term from this product, we'll get the number 1. Next, if we take a 1 over 2 squared from this first term and 1 from the rest of the terms, we get 1 over 2 squared. Notice there are only two choices for each of these terms of the product. So that's kind of interesting. So next, if we take 1 over 3 squared from this second term and 1 from the rest of them, we get 1 over 3 squared. Similarly, here we'll get 1 over 5 squared. Then, just to do these things kind of in order, let's take 1 over 2 squared from this first term, 1 over 3 squared from the second, and 1 from the rest. That'll give us 1 over 6 squared. Then we can take 1, 1, 1, 1 over 7 squared, and then the rest ones. And now let's take a step back and notice that we have not achieved 1 over 4 squared. That's because 4 is not prime. We can similarly not achieve 1 over 8 squared because there's no way to get a product of 1 over 8 squared if we only have one copy of each prime squared here. 
We also can't get one over nine squared. The next thing that we can get is one over 10 squared because 10 is equal to five times two. And if you look carefully, you can see what's happening here is we cannot include any prime in the factors of these denominators more than one time. So our next one will be one over 11 squared. We can't use one over 12 squared. Then we have one over 13 squared. And then that continues on and on and on. So let's write out what we have here. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of one over n squared, but the values of n are very special. No prime divides n more than one time. Okay, so there's actually a name for that and we'll introduce the name for that on the next board, which will also serve as our summary. So let's wrap this up nicely with a definition and a nice way to rephrase our result. So we say that a natural number is square free if for all primes p, p squared does not divide in. So you can rephrase this a bunch of different ways. Maybe you could also say that the prime factorization of n only includes primes to the first power. That would be the same. Now let's rephrase the result that we saw on the last board. So if we take the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared, where n is square free, so it's the sum of the reciprocal of the squares of the square free numbers, we get 15 over pi squared. And I think that's a pretty nice result. And that's a good place to stop.